let me start by expressing my own condolences to those in Bermuda who have lost loved ones as a consequence of the COVID-19 outbreak. My thoughts and prayers, together I know with those of the rest of the island, are with you now and in the days to come. At the same time, I again pay my tribute to all the medical, nursing and health staff who continue to work so hard to tackle the outbreak and to the men and women of the Royal Bermuda Regiment and the Bermuda Police Service for all they are doing, together with many others. Yesterday, I and the Deputy Governor visited the homeless shelter at Cedarbridge and saw for ourselves the good work being carried out by the health and family services staff there and by members of St John Ambulance, assisting our homeless population. That is just one important example. I know there are many others playing their part across the island to help those in current need. Following the resolutions passed earlier today in both houses of the Legislature, I have signed the notice confirming that the shelter-in-place regulations will continue in effect until 2nd May. These regulations, which maintain the nighttime curfew and set out the arrangements for essential daytime visits to grocery stores and pharmacies, continue to have my support, precisely because they help to limit community transmission, flatten the curve, and crucially, help to reduce the level of demand on the hospital and its staff. I'm also pleased to confirm today, as the Premier has indicated, that with the assistance of the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, a second Airbridge flight from the UK has been organised for Friday, 24th April. The British Airways charter flight will depart from Heathrow Airport, land in Bermuda, and then return back to London on Saturday, 25th April. This flight will have three purposes. First, to bring back those ordinarily resident in Bermuda who are currently in the UK, with priority again being given to young persons and vulnerable people who need to get back home. As before, all those coming in on the flight will be required to stay at a government-approved quarantine facility for the minimum 14-day quarantine period. Secondly, people currently in Bermuda who were ordinarily resident in the UK and who want to get back there will be able to book places on the return flight to London. Those who hope to travel to countries other than the UK will need a valid onward ticket to their destination or they will not be permitted to travel. The cost of each leg of the flight, either from London to Bermuda or from Bermuda to London, will be £500. The third purpose of the flight, and just as importantly, is that it will bring with it further COVID-19 medical supplies and protection equipment for Bermuda, as well as other pharmaceuticals and essential medicines which are required here. Those wishing to travel from Bermuda to the UK on 25th April should contact the executive officer at Government House, whose email address is executiveofficer at gov.bm. That's executiveofficer at gov.bm if you are in Bermuda and wish to get the return flight back to the UK. And I'm grateful to all my staff at Government House, as well as to the Bermuda Government Office in London, for all their work in helping this flight to take place. Finally, let me join in thanking the vast majority of people on this island who understand the continued need for the social distancing and other shelter-in-place arrangements which are still required at this time. They are a disruption to normal life. I know they're not easy. But they help to keep us safe and are the best way forward for helping us to return in due course to a more normal way of life to which we are all looking forward. Stay at home and stay safe. Thank you, Premier.